Example one: rank, sheet rank. In this table, we need to quickly identify which representatives have achieved the highest and lowest sales. The employees in the table are ordered by city, and this can't be changed, so we can't sort them by sales. So we'll use the rank function, which determines the position of a given value in the list. We're going to look for the ranking of this value in that list, and it's necessary to add dollar signs so that the list does not move during copying. After copying the formula and using conditional formatting, the best and the worst sellers are clearly visible. Example two: sum if. Data sheet sum if, and the sheet with the solution is sum if two. In this example, we need to divide the sum of expenses into categories in this table. The arguments of the sum if function are the range, where the function looks for criteria, the criteria, what the criteria function is looking for, and the sum range, which data function should be added if the range equals the criteria. It is often convenient to enter entire columns into the range and sum range fields, as it will be easier to copy the formula into the cells below. We have the spending for category one in the UK. Before copying the formula into the other cells, we need to remember to add dollar signs for columns D and K. Then copy the formula using any of the usual methods. The best way to check the validity of this formula is to compare the total spending in the original and results table. Here it's the same. Example three: sum if. Data sheet sum if, and the sheet with the solution is sum if two. Based on the data used in the previous example, we'll now add up the expenses by categories and months. Since both of these things are in columns, we'll have to combine the two criteria. There's only one criterion in the sum if function, but we can join many criteria and use it as one. To do this, use an ampersand in column B. Now enter the sum if function. It should look for criteria in column B. The criteria are cells K9 and L8. And the values that should be added are in column I. Once again, before copying the formula, remember to add the dollar signs. Columns B and I should not move. The names of all the categories are in row eight, and all the countries are in column K. Here, I'm entering the function and adding the dollar signs separately because I'm teaching you how to use the function. But in normal situations, you can do everything at once. Copy the formula, then check the total. Seven thousand seven hundred thirty-four. Seven thousand seven hundred thirty-four. In complex cases, a good alternative to sum if is the sum ifs function, which adds the data that meets a few conditions. The function is described in my expert functions lesson. Example four: compound annual growth rate. Or CAGR. The compound annual growth rate is the average annual change calculated for a specific number of years. Excel doesn't have a function that calculates this, so it's worth remembering the formula. In this example, the sales in 2018 were 10.0, and the sales are expected to be 23.6 in 2027. We need to calculate the average annual growth required to meet this projection. We'll use the following formula. The final value equals 23.6. The initial value equals 10, and the number of periods equals 10, because the table shows data for 10 years. Example five: text functions. Sheet text functions. Introducing left and right functions. A fairly common problem is wrong date formatting. There are many date formats used around the world, and often Excel can't understand one even when cell formatting is used. For example, if the date is written day dash month dash year, we can automatically convert it into a form Excel understands using text functions. First, we'll use a write function to cut out the year. In this case, the function takes away four characters starting from the right. To cut out the day, we'll use the similar left function. This time, only removing two digits at a time. And to cut out the month, use the mid function. This function has already been explained in detail in my beginner functions lesson. 
start from the fourth character and cut out two digits. After separating the elements of the date, we can combine them by putting ampersand signs and forward slashes between them. Now we can copy the formulas across the rest of the data. To check to see if Excel understands the dates as dates, add any number to the date and make sure the date changes correctly. After combining the functions from columns C to F, we get the same result using only one formula. Start with the final function, then copy the formulas from cells C to E into it. Search and len. Another common problem is splitting text containing first names and surnames into two columns. Using the search function, we can determine where the name should split. Using the len function determines the number of characters in the cell. Using the left function, cut out the first name, and cut out the surname with the right function. Another way to do this is to use the mid function, starting one character after the space. When cutting out the name, you can use the exact number of characters in the surname, number of total characters minus position of space, or use any large number, which Excel understands as the end of the text. The same effect can be obtained even faster using the convert text to columns wizard. Start by selecting the data you want to separate and clicking on text to columns from under the data tab. Then click on next in the window that is displayed, select space and next again. On the next screen, select cell G10 as the destination and press finish. The division has been carried out correctly. The conversion wizard can't cope with more complicated cases like when middle names or initials are involved, but we can solve this problem using text functions. Let's start by determining where the first and second spaces are located. Use the search function. For the first space, the formula is the same as the one used in the previous example. You can even copy it from the previous example. In order to determine where the second space is, we also need to input a start number, which is the position of the first space plus one. For those who do not have a second name or initial, the result of the formula is an error. In the next column, using the ifError function, we can determine who has only one name. Find the first name in the same way as in the previous example. For the second name, we will use an ifError function, which uses the information from column D. If there's only one name, the cell will be empty, and we type in double quotation marks. If there's a middle name or initial, cut it out using the mid function. Mid functions start from the position of the first space, plus one, and it cuts out as many characters as the difference between the spaces, minus one. It's a mistake to cut out a name or surname, including a space character. The surname is cut again using the mid function. To determine which position the first letter of the name is in, use the if function. If you prefer to use nested functions instead of more simple functions in multiple columns, you can include the formulas from columns C to E in the formulas from in columns F to H and delete what was in columns C to E. There are many other ways to solve these problems. I've chosen the ones I've just presented to you because they are great for practicing text functions. Example 6. Address. Datasheet address. Sheet address 2 is the solution. The combo box used in this example is explained in more detail in my forms lesson. The vlookup function is shown in my lookup and reference functions lesson. You don't need to watch those lessons before watching this example, but they definitely present many useful examples. The idea here is to create a graph that will present some data depending on the country and the type of data selected by the user of the report. The graph will give us the data from the table. The selected data should appear in it. Below we have the source data table. Obviously, in a real business report, the quantity of source data would be much bigger. Start by making some combo boxes that will allow you to choose the market and data type. This option is available under the Developer tab. If this tab isn't visible to you, right-click on the ribbon and select Customize the ribbon, then tick Developer. The first combo box allows you to choose a country. Right-click on it and select Format Control. The input range is here and we'll choose this cell as the cell link. Similarly, 
create a combo box for selecting the data type. In cell B6 using two VLOOKUP functions, enter a formula that will search for the type of data that has been selected. Connect the functions using ampersands, and put a space surrounded by quotation marks between them. This cell will be used at a later stage as a chart title, which will change depending on the market and the type of data selected. Under the table, enter the numbers from 1 to 12, so that the same formula can be used for each month. We'll start searching for data using the address function, which creates a cell address based on this data from the sources. Row number. If you select sales in cell H2, the number 1 appears. Since the sales data is in cell C28, we need to add 27 to get to this cell. Column number. The first column we are interested in is column C. Here we'll use the numbers which we put below the table. The first is the number 1, and a reference to it will be used in this formula. To do this, we have to add 2 so that it represents column C, the third column in the spreadsheet. Abs num specifies the reference type. Type in a number 1 for an absolute row or relative column. In cell A1, type in a number 1 for regular addressing. In sheet text, type in the word address, which is the name of the worksheet. The formula prepared in this way shows the address for the cell area C28 to C30, depending on which type of data is selected using the combo box. This formula does not take into account the country that has been selected and always shows the addresses of the UK data, which is first on the list. Sales Units Margin As we need this function to show the relevant data depending on the country, the reference to cell E2 should also be entered into the row number. Because the data for each country takes up three lines, the number in cell E2 needs to be multiplied by 3. As for the UK, which is first on the list, this new data moves the address three cells down. The number 27 has been reduced to 24 to compensate for it. Other arguments of the function do not change. After copying the function to the right, we get the addresses of the data specific to the country and the type of data that was selected in both combo boxes. To make sure that the function has been entered correctly, I suggest checking several combinations of choices before continuing. Putting an indirect function into the address function replaces the cell's address with its values. The most convenient method is to add it manually. Copy the adjusted formula into the remaining fields. All that's left to do is to add the graph that uses the data shown in the table. Hide the combo box links, the numbers below the table, and the source data by changing the font colour to white, for example, and our chart is now ready. Beware! The sheet names written in the address and indirect functions do not change automatically when the sheet names are changed. Every time you change the name of a sheet, you must manually change the references in all necessary functions, otherwise you'll receive error messages. Example 7. Sheet Choose the choose function is very simple. From a list of values which have to be entered separately, it selects the number that appears in the item index. In this example, five possible discount values have been entered. The discount level depends on the client class, which has values from 1 to 5. After entering the number in cell B4, the discount is now shown in cell C4. This function is similar in its operation to the VLOOKUP function although it has some limitations. Example 8. Sheet stat. The average function is very common, but has many opponents who claim that, in reality, it doesn't say much about the values, and even distorts some information. To give you a real-life example, when I walk my dog, on average, we have a total of three legs. 
Therefore, in statistics, several other measures have to be created, the most common ones being the median and the dominant. The median is a number that, in a sorted set of data, is in the middle, when there's an odd amount of data. For an even number of elements, the median is the average of the two middle numbers. The dominant is the most frequent value in the data set. You can calculate the median with the function which has the same name. The dominant is calculated with the mode.sngl function. This function, in a case where several elements occur the same number of times, only gives the first one. In the example below, we have two twos and two sixes, so the dominant is calculated as two. Of course, if we add one more value of six, the dominant will become six. A printable version of the exercises list is available to download so that you can tick the examples you have completed. Hopefully, this will motivate you to complete the whole course and pass the exam available at the end of the Advanced Excel course.